Well, in the beginning I mentioned the safety data sheet and if you work today according to the provisions in the safety data sheet, then there will be no change. It's just about creating more awareness. My guest, Thorsten, is an expert in regulatory compliance and chemical safety. Thorsten, how critical are adhesives from occupational safety standpoint? Well, every industrial workplace has its hazards and uh, in the EU every employer is required to care for the safety of the workplace and to train his employees in how to handle uh, the workplace safely. This includes simple things like uh, tripping hazards or like noise or like irradiation which you may have in welding. Yeah. Uh, we are talking today about chemical products and for chemical products it's mostly about workplace hygiene, so how to avoid that you have skin contact with a chemical product. In some cases also uh, to care about vapor concentrations, although that's in modern adhesives less relevant, becoming more and more less relevant. And all the information about that you will find in the safety data sheet and then it's basically about how you safely handle the products. That means every technology used comes with specific requirements in terms of precautions. Um, regarding adhesives, what is the main concern of the regulators? Well, we are talking adhesives and to perform their, tech, uh, their technical properties, adhesives need some reactive chemistry to do the curing and to form the bond to the substrate. So all adhesive technology somehow can have molecules, small molecules, which can pose a hazard. Um, the focus of the regulators these days is more on the long-term effects of chemical hazards. So if you have something short-term like working with an acid and a drop on your skin, you will feel it burning, yeah. that's yeah. easy. But the long-term effects, and in the case of today's talk, we talk about sensitization. Uh, there, the effect can appear years after the exposure and therefore it's important uh, that you know it right away when you work and take care and work safely to avoid any uh, risks that may appear later on. So today we talk about polyurethanes, which are materials that are very widely used and there's also chemistry needed to uh, produce them. Um, what, what products, what polyurethane products are critical from the context of chemical safety? Mm -hmm. uh, well, in, in the first place, the diisocyanates, which are the critical small yeah. molecules, uh, they can only survive in very tightly closed packaging because as soon as they see a molecule of water, they will react and uh, disappear. But they are needed uh, to be transformed in the useful products like, for example, uh, foam mattresses or car seats or waterproof uh, textiles, or in our case, the adhesives where they are needed to form the bond. Yeah. Uh, in the final product you will not see them at all, but during these work steps to create those products you have to know how to handle them safely and that's where this, uh, this regulation targets it actually. And there is also a limit in there, so basically 0.1% of diisocyanates in the product are seen as the concentration limit and even some of our products uh, can be made with less than that, but in most cases you will need the train. Okay, so you mentioned topic of training, um, so that means users will have to do a specific training on that. Are there also precautions, additional precautions to uh, be implemented when it's about using such products? Well, in the beginning I mentioned the safety data sheet and if you work today according to the provisions in the safety data sheet, then there will be no change. It's just about creating more awareness. Okay. And the whole supply chain of the polyurethane industry have uh, created these training modules which are now available online and where you can on the dedicated website go through these training and also receive your certificate in the end to prove. Um, there is also an option that it is done in a classroom training. Uh, even a company can do it on their own according to the provisions in, the, in this regulation yeah. and some external providers may also step in. We have in the EU one case which is Denmark where such a training for diisocyanates and also for epoxy products, so another class of uh, for example adhesives, is established since years and uh, they have dedicated schools doing this in a three-day training course 
this will remain in Denmark. They will just align it with, uh, with the new requirements. So there are a few options, but um, industry is providing an easily to access uh, online option for that. Okay, so it's basically nothing completely new. Um, now, if I'm a user of, of such products, how can I identify that, that my products are now requiring such a training? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, I said before, not all products are requiring this training. And there is since February 2022 already a sentence explaining this need for a training on the label of the packaging. So if you take your product in your hands, you can read it. And this same sentence is also in chapter two of the safety data sheet. So these two are the relevant sources to identify the products that need it. Okay. So you, you mentioned there's an online training. So how can users of such products um, get access to their training? Well, there's one dedicated website for the whole of the EU where the trainings in all the EU languages uh, are made available. And uh, you can access us this also through a link that we have on our Zika website. And um, FICA, the Association of Adhesives and Sealants Manufacturers, is providing a voucher uh, with which you can then access the training also without any additional cost. So it's relatively easy to do this in the adhesive and sealant section. And uh, the website also has a specific part, which is adhesives and sealants, where you will find a list of uh, modules that you can then choose according to the work step that you're doing with adhesives and sealants. Okay, so that sounds pretty complicated. If I'm considering I'm a manufacturer, I may have people who are not really having computer access. Um, I may have like fluctuation, new people coming on. Um, why not considering alternatives for that don't require such a training? It is an additional step, but it is a, an effort of about one to two hours, depending on the module you take. And it has to be repeated every five years. So I think it's uh, not too high an effort. Yeah. And if you think of the effort that may be needed to qualify a new product or a new process in production, then it may be quite worthwhile to do such a training and on the other hand it's about diisocyanates but most of the training is actually about handling chemical products so you may need it even for other technologies or at least it would be helpful for that. But uh, yes I know we also have other solutions in Zika so David can you explain a little bit more about that? Sure yeah I mean uh, you probably know we have the uh, Zika Flex STP products that uh, sealants and adhesives and assembly adhesives um, that are based on silane terminated technology. So they're free mm -hmm. of isocyanates. Mm -hmm. um, those solutions exist for, for pretty long. Um, they have some limitations when it's about higher strength applications or so structural applications. Um, but Zika has also developed a new technology. It's uh, called Perform. Um, Perform is polyurethane material that contains less than a 0.1%. So this is not requiring the training because we are below that um, threshold. How do you support your customers on this journey between training and alternative solutions? You probably know Zika is present in more than 100 countries and in the European Union we are present in every country um, mm. with local experts talking local language. Um, these colleagues are there to help customers in maybe selecting the right training modules, um, but also in identifying alternative solutions and helping them on the qualification process. Thorsten, I'd like to thank you for joining that episode. And I think with your expertise, we were able again to showcase why it's not only about better made with adhesives, but also made better made with Zika. Thank you very much for being here. If you like to attend future episodes of Better Made with Adhesives, sign up to our YouTube channel or the newsletter that can be found on the Zika website. See you next time when it is about Better Made with Adhesives. <laughs>